Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissHandLog.com. Today we're going to go over inrush current limiters, otherwise known as thermistors. Uh, we're going to go to um, we're going to go to a vendor and look to see what they have, and we're going to go over the data sheet and I do a little explanation. I've kind of covered this stuff in power supply design under inrush kerning um, section, but this is where we're going to go find the part and look at the data sheet. Okay. Let's go do it. Okay, hey, welcome to um, selecting NRESH current loader or uh, thermistors. Um, it's NRESH current limiters are a type of thermistor. It's from Mauser.com. Mauser.com, NRESH current limiter. I searched for right through here circuit protection thermistors, and then NRESH current limiters was the type of thermistor at their website. So, Coming down here at these thermistors, you can see they uh, they almost look like a capacitor or MOV if you know if you're familiar with those. Um, you come over here and there's voltage ratings, 120 volts, 240 volts. That's the kind of thing we want. 10 ohms. That that sounds good. If we have 120 volts divided by 10 ohms, we have about 12 amps. So uh, 12 amps. Uh, is great. I mean, that's the inrush current, so we're going to limit our inrush current to 12 amps. And that will help our fuse and everything else. This 9 amp rating is the constant steady state current, so we're well beneath that. Um, it's 22 millimeter in diameter. The part number is SL22, that's the series. And that 22 signifies this diameter, 5 millimeter thick, so 22 by 5 millimeter. Um, here's 12, 10, 15, so it shows you the different sizes. The bigger ones can handle more energy. The way these are rated, here's a mega surge. So you know what, the way these are rated is in how much energy they can handle. So they're rated by current, steady state current, the ohms, and then the third thing that's the important thing is, now normally these are going to be rated more, way more than what you need and 10 ohms is what you're looking for that's what you want to limit the inrush to and then the uh, and then the inrush current like the the energy that this as that currents coming in it's, it's developing a lot of power on this device because it's got to see it starts off at 10 ohms and the resistance drops as the current heats it up so let's just look at the data sheet because I want to kind of show you what that looks like so this Amatherm um, company SL22 this part number is the, you know, that there, um, showing 22 millimeter by five, like we said. Okay, here's the thing, what we're talking about. 10, 10 ohms, nine amps, okay, fine, fine. Um, now again, one thing I want to point out is that nine amps is a 25C. When this thing heats up, it, it won't take as much current. Uh, the recommended maximum energy is 100 joules. Um, now, you know, joules are like watts with time taken in consideration because watts are just it's what it's how many joules per second basically so if you had a hundred joules in one second that'd be a hundred watts but it says it's actually going to fail at 220 so they want you to derate it to 100 they want you to stay well beneath what the actual failure now if you have 120 volts coming in you can have as almost a 7,000 microfarad cap, say 6,946 microfarad cap. That's the size of cap uh, capacitor you can have on 120 volts uh, creating this inrush current through that resistance and, and that gives you 100 joules. So I've shown how to do this math or how to do these equations in my power supply design um, where I show how to use a thermistor. Um, but basically, just quickly, I want to just kind of as a reminder or as a first time, when you think about this, this is capacitor is sitting on 120, but if you're going through a transformer, stepping the voltage down, then uh, let's say you step it down to half of that, you know, say plus or minus 30 volts um, would be half of this. So then you could essentially go twice the size of that capacitance. So in our kind of audio amplifier power supplies, that means you can almost double these values. I mean, that that's kind of a rough way to look at it, okay? 
but it's good to do the math, make sure you're good, and it's good to choose a part that's big enough, okay? So 22 millimeters, that's less than an inch in diameter, still a good size part, but um, that's $1.56, okay? Let's go down where I saw that, that other guy, the real big one, um, the Mega Surge, I like that. Okay, now it can handle 15 amps all day, you know, at, at room temperature. It's also 10 ohms. It's 31 millimeters and 9.3 thick. So it's almost twice as thick and it's and it's larger. It's over an inch in diameter. Let's just look at this one for fun. It's $4.50. I think this is the kind of guy you could put in and never have to worry about it. It's, um, you know, again, the number's there. Now, very similar, 10 ohms, 15 amps, 250 joules. So this one go up to 250 joules, but the instantaneous failure is gonna be around 500. So again, derating by about half. Now you go up to 20,000 microfarads, which if you're on the other side of the transformer and you're going, uh, you know. Now, another thing when I mentioned going the other side transformer, I was giving a, a maximum I said if you go the other side, if you're 60 volts on the other side, but really on the other side, you're plus or minus 30, right? So you're really, you're about a fourth. So um, so what that would mean is that if you're, you could go four times this for each voltage rail. So if you're 30 volts, you could go like really about 40,000 microfarads and 40,000 microfarads before you have to worry about the same blowing up. Or, you know, that's where it's rated. And, and then again, the, the rating for where it fails is twice that high. So here's the dissipation. This is the other interesting parameter you're going to think. 63.7 milliwatts per degree C. So if you flip that equation over, you can multiply that by how much watts you, or how much energy you're putting in. That, that'll kind of tell you how hot it's getting. But that um, kind of gives you an idea. Thermal time constant is 194 seconds. So if you did take a 19,000 microfarad cap on 120 volts and you applied power and let it charge that cap up, it would handle it. But afterwards, it would take 194 seconds to cool down before it's ready to do it again. So if you were to take a power supply and turn it on and off real fast and did it twice instead of waiting this time, you could damage this guy. But then again, the other thing that has to happen is that capacitor would have to fully drain every time you turn it off. Fully drain, turn it back on, fully charge, it fell this thing. But, you know, usually on a power supply, if you turn it off, turn it on again, the capacitor is still charged. So uh, you're not gonna get that inrush current. Uh, but anyway, that's, you wanna, these are important things. So first of all, um, look for the voltage rating, just like the fuse, start there, um, go to the, and if you're looking at inrush currents, they, they know you're dealing with um, 120 volts at least. So um, the next thing is to look for the ohms you want, like how much you want to reduce that inrush current. And then make sure you have enough amps. But really what it comes down to is make sure you have enough joules in this capacitance. Um, and then lastly is remember that you have this time constant. You have this much time before you can apply power again after that capacitor's, when you turn it off, and if that capacitor is instantly discharged, or if the capacitor is discharged in half this amount of time, you turn it on again, you get another inrush, this thing might fail. Um, so, if, if, you know, so if you do put a bleed off resistor on your capacitors, you can kind of think about it this too. You can let your capacitor bleed off maybe a little bit longer than this, so there's still a little energy. So, just in case somebody did play with your switch and turn it on and off, your capacitor wouldn't be bled out, you know. So you could bleed your capacitor, you know, a lot a lot longer than this. So you still got, you know, plenty of charging your capacitor in 194 seconds. So it's just something to consider, something to think about and when you're choosing these guys. And if if you're you're limiting your inrush current, limiting the energy on it, like um, with an inductor in series with the capacitors then you won't have as much energy and then you know you'll be if you size this guy big then you don't have to worry about this so much because you're never pushing it to the 250 joules 
you know, in this case, if you use the capacitor half that size, you could probably wait half that time to turn it on again. So that's the, that's kind of way to look at this, and and uh, and you know, it, in my uh, designing with thermistors, I go over this in more detail, and I have a a quick sheet that you can look at that shows the math and how to and how to do the uh, calculations. But okay. Hey, thanks. If you like this, give me a thumbs up.